So let's start looking at building a layout with HTML and CSS. I have a starter page here with a typical web page layout. I've got a header, a nav bar with four links, a couple of sections on my page, and then a footer with some links down in the footer. Nothing really exciting about the page, but it's got all the common elements that we would use. Now, for if you want to follow along and make the changes as I'm making them, there's also a code pen page here. The link for this will be in the comments for the video. All right. Now, this is a basic layout. We can create our CSS without any media queries, have it look like this, which there's no problem with it. But if you start loading it onto a smaller page, so there's a smaller screen, a phone, you can see as we start to get down to the narrower widths on devices, we start to get into kind of a mess. Very hard to read the content on those stories. The links, I mean, these are all very short words, but you can imagine if these were longer words, they'd be overlapping each other or dropping down to the next line and just breaking the layout in general. So we want to do something that's going to handle things a little bit better. We're going to create some CSS that renders when things are this small, when things are this size, when things are this size, or when things fill out a large area like this. We're going to resize the text. There is a little bit of media queries going on here in the default. You can see the title at the very top, how it changes size depending on what size that we're working on with our screen. So there's three and there's actually a, a fourth size. There's four different media queries. So we need to change this layout. We need to approach it in a different way. Mobile first is the idea that we want to have everything working by default in a screen this size. That way, even if the person doesn't have a browser that supports media queries, they're still going to get a layout that works. At a larger screen, it may not be pretty, but it's still going to be functional and readable. So let's go into our CSS, take a look at what we've got, and then look at the changes that we can make. HTML, nothing really revolutionary here. We've got a header. We've got a nav section with a UL and some list items, anchors inside of each of the list item. There's a main section. Inside of that, we've got two articles. They both have the same class name, call to. And down here in the footer, I've got a paragraph, and inside the paragraph, there's a couple of links. Okay. Now, my CSS file, the way I like to break it up is I have my imports at the top. I bring in the Google fonts that I want to use. Then I set up my defaults, strip out all the padding and margin to do a reset. So if something's got padding or margin, I know it does because I'm the one who's put it there. I'm using border box for my box sizing, so I don't have to worry about calculating my padding and border when I set widths. My default for the HTML, I set a font size, line height, and the font that I want to use on everything unless I specify otherwise. You'll see that I do have my Google font followed by some fallbacks for the various operating systems. In my H1, 2, and 3, my header tags, I have my font sizes that I've listed up at the top here. These are going to be my sizes. I'm not using any sizes other than these throughout my page to get a proper typographic hierarchy. The three headings are going to use the Montserrat font. They're going to use the different sizes. And I'm setting the same padding on all of them. By default, paragraphs have the same padding. And in the footer, I decided I was going to use the Montserrat font as well with the smallest of the font sizes. The anchors in my footer, they've got slightly different styling as well. Then into my navigation menu, the UL itself, 100% the width of the screen. Overflow Auto I'm using so that I will get background seen behind the whole thing or borders if I put a border on the bottom like I have here. I, don't, I want it to be actually at the bottom. Overflow Auto protects me when I use float for my list items like I have here. Now with 25%, this is something that we're going to rewrite right away. I want to do mobile first. And that means those links have to be 100% the width. 
like this. I want them vertically stacked. I don't want them cut up into small little sections. When I'm at this small size, I want 100%. When we expand the screen, you can see, okay, my font sizes, they're bumped up a little bit. It's not the prettiest having them stacked like this, but it's still functional. And it's going to work for the phones as well. So we want to do the same sort of thing with these two stories. So the uh, rest of this is pretty standard, just styling and coloring on the, the fonts. The border, I put the border right on all of the list items. So the first, second, third, and fourth are all going to have a border on the right, but then I'm removing it from the last one. And that means that I'm going to be getting, actually, here, I'll move my cursor away so we don't have those. You can see the first three have the border. This style I'm going to remove from my default. I'm going to put it into my media queries. I'll come back to do that. Now my layout, I've got the wrapper div. It's giving me a little bit of a padding on the left and right here. The header, nav, main, they're all 100%. Call to, by default, I'm going to have to change that to 100%. And there we go. Now I've got a mobile first layout. Fills up a whole, the whole width. Expand it all the way. All right. It's functional. Not pretty, but it's functional. So let's start looking at what we can do in the media queries to make this layout work better. And here they are at the bottom of the page, my media queries. So if there's something different that I wanted to do in the small sizes, or the medium, or large, or extra large. So these are giving me some decent breakpoints between the different sizes. My anchors, let's start with those. So I've got the four of them here, and at my smallest, they're stacked. The next size up, so when I get up to about this size, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have one, two, three, four. Make a little box out of it. So our selectors will come up to the top here. We'll grab the ones that we want in the navigation. The UL, we're not changing anything on that. It's just these. So I'm going to copy that, get rid of that one, and I'll come back down to the bottom inside the media query for this size. There we are. So we're going to say 50% is the width. And border right on all of them. Sure, we can do that. We don't necessarily need to have this one at this point. I'm going to put it down in the bottom because that's likely where I'm going to be using it later. Okay, there we go. There's our four links. And to put a line here, I can put it on the first and the third one, or just go to the UL and say on the left hand edge of my UL. I'm going to have that. So that's it. this size right here. So nav ul or nav dot main nav or just main nav. It's going to work for any of those combinations. Border on the left. 1px solid light gray. There we go. So there's my links. Now if we wanted to have a border along the bottom here, we could do that. We can scrap the border on the bottom of this one. And we'll just add it. So if we want the borders, there we have it. Main story, second story, yeah, we're probably still okay keeping it as one column here. But we're going to get to a point where eh, this is kind of wide. 
let's do something when we get to this medium size, or the large size rather. We'll put the links across the top, four columns, and we'll split the story into the two columns. So here we want our styles for these. Paste these in here. Uh, we'll go back to what we had originally. And 25%. Bring this one back. There we go. All right, so we have our four links with the borders. We'll get rid of the one on this side for the UL. Border left and bottom, none. There we go. So we've got a border across the bottom, the ones in between. Now this border belongs to here. We're going to have to get rid of that at the smaller size. We want to put it here, right in the middle, and split the columns into two. So I'm going to bring down my column into my large media query. Width is going to be 50%. We want the border right on one. We're going to get rid of it on the other, the last child. I'm just going to remove it and bring it down here. And we don't... Uh, yeah, we'll keep the float here and the padding is going to be the same as the original, so we can remove that. We'll come back up to our defaults and say, well, they're filling 100%, so they don't need the float property and they don't need the border right. Okay, let's go back down to our small size. All right, we're going to fix the border here, put it on the right side, but we've got this working. There we go. There's no extra border on the right-hand side. That's good. Border on the left, one pixel solid, df, df, df. There we go. So we've got our links. As we expand a little bit more, there we go. We're using this. I've got four buttons. This works well all the way down, no extra borders anywhere. When we get up to this size now, we've got two stories still readable with our border right here. And then when we get to the largest size, we'll get up to about here when we jump up to that biggest size. So here's a breakpoint right here. At this point, we're going to make three columns. So this, this, and the links are going to make up three columns. We'll say 20% for the first link, leaving us 80, so 40 and 40. 20, 40, 40. That'll be your size at this point. Okay, so come down here to the bottom. And at the largest size, we're going to say 40 and 40. These properties are going to be the same. Our main navigation is going to change. So I'll copy and bring this down. So what are we changing? The UL itself inside the nav. The nav is going to be now with 20%. And we can play with these numbers a little bit afterwards. Float left, border right, one pixel solid. Same as the others. These are now going to go back to 100%. They're, they don't need to be floated. We can remove that property. 
this property carries on from before. The border right we don't need, but we can make that a border bottom on each one of them. This we don't need because they're going to be a vertical stack. There we go. There's our vertical stack. We want to get rid of the border, border, border on the edge of those. Bottom's going to be that, and the right, we will tell it to go away. There we are. So there's our nice stack of links, and our two stories are side by side. And this will work as we get this page larger and larger. We are still going to be able to use these links. And here are two stories making three columns. And that's it. That's converting a story, or converting a web page rather, from all these different sizes into something that's mobile first.